Hi, and welcome back. In this module, we will introduce the RMF and the basic functions of why we implement the RMF in organizations. So stay tuned. This lesson is part of the course that covers the risk management framework, including the Certified Accreditation Professional Certification Exam. This lesson is an introduction to the risk management framework, or the RMF, and it will provide an overview of what the RMF is and why we use it. The management of organizational risk is key to the organization's information security program, the selection of controls, and it provides a framework for selecting the appropriate controls to be implemented on different programs and systems within the organization. The selection and specification of controls is part of the organization-wide ISP, as we talked about in bullet one. It's critical in the management of risk, and it's necessary to provide protection to individuals, organizational operations, and organizational assets. The RMF provides a framework and a structure for selecting controls and applying them to systems and programs in the organization to provide protection. NIST created the RMF in partnership with the Department of Defense, or the DOD, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, or ODNI, and the Committee on National Security Systems, or CNSS. It was created to improve information security, to strengthen the risk management process, to encourage reciprocity among organizations, and in July of 2016, the OMB, or the Office of Management and Budget, revised OMB Circular A130 to include privacy responsibilities under the RMF. This was instrumental in developing a framework and a program that manages risks in information systems across all of the government. Until this point, each part of the government had its own process for validating and certifying information systems to be used within that organization or that structure. For example, the DOD had their own way of certifying systems, the intelligence community had a different way of certifying systems, and the rest of the government used yet a third way to certify and accredit information systems. Using the RMF, an umbrella program was developed that every organization within the government uses the same process, and this means a system that is certified under the RMF in one organization can easily be used in another organization, a process we call reciprocity. The RMF emphasizes risk management. It does this by promoting the development of security and privacy capabilities into information systems throughout the SDLC, what is known as the System Development Lifecycle, or also the Software Development Lifecycle by maintaining situational awareness of the security and privacy posture of those systems on an ongoing basis through a continuous monitoring process and by providing information to senior leaders and executives to facilitate decision regarding the acceptance of risk to the organization. Using the RMF, we can have a standard set of controls that is maintained and developed throughout the SDLC it's going to give leadership in the organization a view into the security and control status of each system and program that they're responsible for. And this helps them make critical decisions through a risk-based lens. By using the RMF, an organization has a repeatable process that's designed to promote the protection of information and information systems commensurate with risk. It emphasizes organization-wide preparation that's necessary to manage security and privacy risks. It facilitates the categorization of information and information systems, the selection, the implementation, the assessment, and monitoring and controls, and the authorization of information systems and common controls. It promotes the use of automation for near real-time risk management and ongoing system and control authorization through the implementation of a continuous monitoring process. This is important to tie the RMF in with the SDLC throughout the information system or the software package 
or even the common control set's life cycle from the point when it's developed till the point when it's decommissioned. This gives us the necessary framework to put the correct security and privacy controls in place to protect not only the information on the system, but also the information system. The RMF encourages the use of correct and timely metrics to provide senior leaders and managers with the necessary information to make cost-effective, risk-based decisions for information systems supporting their missions and business functions. It facilitates the integration of security and privacy requirements and controls into enterprise architecture, the SDLC, the acquisition process, and systems engineering processes. It connects risk management processes at the organization and mission business process levels to the risk management processes at the information system level through a senior accountable official for risk management and a risk executive function. It establishes responsibility and accountability for controls implemented within an information system and those inherited by those information systems. The RMF provides a risk-based approach. By this, we mean the risk management framework provides a process that integrates security and risk management activities into the system development lifecycle or the SDLC. It also integrates with software development life cycles, again, SDLC. The risk-based approach to security control selection and specification considers effectiveness, efficiency, and constraints due to applicable laws, directives, executive orders, policies, standards, or regulations. Activities related to managing organizational risk are paramount to an effective information security program and can be applied to both new and legacy systems within the context of the system development life cycle and enterprise architecture. This last point is important. It means we can apply the RMF not only to new systems in the organization, but we can also go backwards in time and look at existing systems in the organization and apply the same framework of risk management and security controls to those existing systems as if they were new systems. The RMF provides a dynamic and flexible approach to effectively manage security and privacy risks in diverse environments with complex and sophisticated threats, evolving missions and business functions, changing systems and organizational vulnerabilities. The RMF is policy and technology neutral. This facilitates ongoing upgrades to IT resources and IT modernization efforts. It supports and helps ensure essential missions and services are provided during such transition periods. That means the system, this framework, is flexible enough to handle threats that are not only complex, but changing over time, becoming more technologically advanced, changing mission businesses, and organizational vulnerabilities that change over time. During these transition periods, the RMF is not tied to a specific technology, so as technology changes, the RMF is flexible enough to react to those changes, ensuring that controls and risk management is consistent throughout these transition periods. The development goals through of the RMF is to ensure that managing system-related security and privacy risks is consistent with the mission and business objectives of the organization and a risk management strategy is established by senior leadership through the risk executive function. And we have to remember this. When we're implementing the risk management framework at the system level, we always need to be thinking about how will this system integrate with the risk management program of the organization and how does it tie and how does it tie to mission and business objectives the objectives and the mission of the organization are critical and should be steering points for how we scale risk at the system level this strategy is defined at the organizational level by senior leadership 
with the help of the risk executive function. To achieve privacy protections for individuals and security protections for information and information systems through the implementation of appropriate risk response strategies. This means the organization has flexibility in the way that will implement controls and also in selecting mitigations and compensating controls for controls that cannot be fully implemented. This gives organizations a dramatic amount of flexibility and allows them to appropriately respond to risks with a strategy tailored for that organization. To support consistent, informed, and ongoing authorization decisions, reciprocity, and transparency and traceability of security and privacy information. This gives senior leadership, including the authorizing official, the ability to see what risks are levied against information systems at almost any point in time of a system in its life cycle. It provides traceability back to those security and privacy controls that are protecting information and information systems. This allows leadership to make informed and consistent decisions when determining if information systems should be authorized or continue to work in the organization. The RMF facilitates the integration of security and privacy requirements and controls into the enterprise architecture, the SDLC process, the acquisition process, and the system engineering process. As you can see, the RMF should be integrated across the organization and should permeate through all of the processes that support the acquisition, development, and maintenance of information systems from the time they are initiated to the time they are decommissioned. The RMF facilitates the implementation of the framework for improving critical infrastructure cybersecurity within federal agencies. This is the cybersecurity framework and it aligns well with the RMF as we'll see later. We implement the RMF not only because it provides a great framework for implementing the required privacy and security controls to protect information and information systems, but it's also main, but it's also mandated by law and regulation. This includes FISMA, which derives FIPS 199, FIPS 200, and OMB Circular A130, which we had talked about earlier. The intelligence community is regulated to use the RMF by the Intelligence Community Directive 503, or ICD 503. The Department of Defense is also required to use the RMF by the Department of Defense Instruction 8510.01. This allows the government to use one risk management program and process for managing information system and program risk throughout the U.S. government. You may be thinking that the RMF is only used for the U.S. government, and that's not true. We have seen in recent years the benefits of the RMF are not being seen only by the government, but also in private sector organizations due to the extensive documentation supporting the process, the availability of trained and certified RMF practitioners, and access to this program is free. Some organizations using the RMF today include organizations in the pharmaceutical, medical, finance, automotive, critical infrastructure, and also DOD contracting, as specified by NIST Special Publication 800-171. And we'll learn more about NIST later. As we talked earlier, the RMF is tightly integrated with the system or software development lifecycle. NIST defines the SDLC through this process, initiation, development or acquisition, implementation and assessment, operations and maintenance, and finally disposal. As we go through the steps and tasks within the RMF, you will see a direct alignment with each task and its related SDLC stage. While they serve different functions, the cybersecurity framework and the risk management framework have been tightly aligned. The cybersecurity framework has a process used to identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover to threats and vulnerabilities in the organization. We'll see that the RMF is normally used for development of system software and programs following the SDLC from initiation to disposal. The cybersecurity framework, on the other hand, is a framework that's used to detect and respond to threats to the organization as they occur. In this lesson, we covered an introduction to the RMF, including an overview of the process, emphasis on why we're using the RMF, the benefits of using the RMF, the RMF approach, development goals, the legal 
emphasis, law and regulations, the private sector use of the RMF, and integration with not only the SDLC or system or software development lifecycle, but also the cybersecurity framework.